Greetings, got a golden blurb here for you, provided uh, on loan from uh, a viewer who wishes to remain anonymous. <laughs> well, I got Goldfinger there on a, an appropriately gold encased bit of foam packaging, but yeah, the, uh, the gold theme continues all throughout. The PCB itself may not be gold any longer, but wow. That is a beautiful, beautiful thing. This is uh, the Gold Lib, a clone replica of the Ad Lib Gold card. Wow. Just phenomenal looking. Revision 1, made on Earth. That's good to know. Hell, it's about time. Yeah, I'll say. This is something I, uh, I'm very happily surprised to see not only the card, but the surround module as well being replicated. Considering how extremely rare, expensive, weirdly desirable. I've done a video about the original AdLib Gold card uh, over on my main LGR channel. And as great as it sounds for a handful of games, there are not uh, very many that really take advantage of this and you're better off with any number of regular sound cards for so many things. But this is, uh, in many ways, an improvement on that, just making it an even cleaner sounding card. You got your YMF-262 right there, I'm just taking a look at. Oh, and your YMZ-263BF. We got all kinds of original chips, plus FPGA, or really CPLD stuff. And this right here is most fascinating. We have the surround module, Goldlib Surround Sound. This is interesting. I have not actually tested the original one of those. I think it's probably even more, uh, the original one is more rare than uh, <laughs> the actual gold card itself. But yeah, they've duplicated both. Speaking of which, let me get some information. So yeah, this uh, was available, and I say was, unfortunately, uh, available on the pcmidi.eu website. A uh, familiar destination for a number of sound card devices and products that I've purchased and have been sent to me and I've covered before here on this channel and probably over on LGR as well, but yeah, uh, a number of uh, familiar usernames and such over on Vogons. Been, uh, they've been working on this for a while and finally it all came together. Yeah, here's the thread. Good old Karopi. Or is it Karopi? I don't I actually don't know. Uh, Leo is uh, the one introducing here on this page. And yeah, back in 2022, this just popped up and uh, immediately a number of folks were sending me links to this and I just sort of eyed it from a distance but didn't really have too much interest in buying it. So I'm very happy to uh, have one on loan to take a, a look at because you know, I've looked at the original AdLib Gold card and while it's really cool, eh, it's a good card. It's just not worth the price and the rarity. It's just more legendary than makes sense. So. Uh, and yeah, I, I didn't feel that it was worth necessarily buying a clone because I just didn't really value what the card did so much. But the fact that this has the surround module, I gotta say that's one of the biggest reasons that I want to try this out. Because otherwise it's just going to be exactly like what I've already shown and covered in my main AdLib Gold video. At least that's the idea. It uses all the same software and drivers and stuff. Yeah, this is a hardware clone of the original card. Only thing modern is the recreation of the Gold Control ASIC that was never available for purchase separately. Everything else has been replicated and uses the same chips and components as the original card. Most importantly, the whole audio output section using the same DAX op amps, mixing, filtering stages, and layout should be great in that respect. Now, there's one difference from the original card since there was no point to replicate it. The proprietary SCSI slash modem interfaces are removed and only recreated in the control up to the point where the original drivers and card diagnostics don't complain about them missing, which makes sense. There were no add-ons ever released for those interfaces, and thus it was decided to skip them. They were planned, but never came out. I mean, I've never seen them anyway, so uh, let's see. It comes with the, uh, the YMZ263 MMA chip, speed sensitive on uh, medium range 486. <laughs> That's interesting. Didn't actually know that. So, hmm. Well, I might have to try this on a, a slower 486 than the wood green because that's got 100 megahertz. Interesting. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, this thing uh, was sold in a very limited run, a very limited number of cards. 
Limited by the amount of just good and real old chips found. All parts depleted for now. All of them that could be made have been sold. That's it. It was 360 euro shipped worldwide. Uh, significantly, significantly less than a real ad lib gold. Uh, and again, this should be a little bit better in some respects with the, all the newer components in here and just knowing the fantastic high quality work they've done with all these other cards like the uh, the Orpheus line, for example, but also the fact that it's got this surround. It's the main thing I kind of want to try here. So I'm going to uh, get this put back in there and uh, we will get this installed on a somewhat slower 486, I suppose. It's kind of amusing that that Altera Max 2 is more powerful than <laughs> the computer itself is gonna be going in. Out with the sound blaster that I forgot. Also controlled the CD-ROM, but we don't need that. And in goes. The gold lib. Yeah. The computer I've got it installed in is the Quantex 486. That thing with the Cyrix something or other processor in there, if I recall, but Turbo is engaged, which puts it down to running around a 486 66DX equivalent. So, uh, should be good and I don't really know what the specifics are of like faster 486s causing problems. I've been testing it like on full speed and with turbo making it slower. It's fine either way to my ears. I don't know, maybe there's some weird edge cases where it's not, whatever, we're just gonna leave it on the slower just in case. And really, I'm pretty much just, just gonna go through here and show, <laughs> I mean, kind of what I've already shown. Uh, with the Adlib Gold, because it's the exact same software. In fact, I used the exact same floppy disks or images of them, of uh, the one that I've already covered on LGR. So, you know, that's the goal here. It's the same dang thing, <laughs> which is great. Uh, yeah, it just installed, saw it as an Adlib Gold, and there you go. So uh, what am I going to do here? I guess we're just going to run through some of the programs. I want to do the jukebox. I want to show some MIDI playback uh, probably in Windows, just because. And then, uh, of course, Dune. Let's just run through, and, and I'm gonna do some direct recordings here, so you can just listen to it. Again, if you want more details on all this, I've already done a full video on the AdLib Gold, so um, let's just listen to this thing, because it sounds fantastic. Uh, yeah, Juke Gold, good place to start. Actually, you know what? Let's get the drivers going first, and the mixer, so... This right here will allow us to not only do mixer things, but go down here into the uh, surround mode. Of course, we have the output modes, which we already, you just have this on the normal gold as well. This is really like the surround sound effects. Like, um, it's like stereo separation, kind of a phase effect. I'm just gonna leave it on uh, linear and we're gonna put surround on and off as I'm going through and playing some of these things. Uh, at least the things that allow you to use this pop-up deal. Um, so anyway, you'll see me going back and forth between this on screen and just kind of listen to the, the difference of all these different effects. It's really more of a, like a, a delay and reverb unit, the surround unit. It's weird. <laughs> it, it doesn't add any surround anything. Those spatial effects add more surround. So it's, it's kind of a confusing name. Well, we're gonna run Jukebox. What do we got here? Yeah, let's just run, yeah, Building Highway. I don't remember what that sounds like. Anyway, we're just gonna play these and we're gonna apply some effects as they're playing. Enjoy.
yeah, hopefully you got an idea of what it's like uh, going through those different modes and selecting all the combination of surround sounds with the things that actually add more of a surround feel. I particularly like the combination of some of the uh, pseudo and spatial effects, but even going over to like mono or, I mean, linear is a nice stereo, but even just like mono combined with a, you know, a chapel or the stadium one, it's just sort of a nice subtle, I don't know, it gives it a presence, but I mean, some of these get really out there. Like that deep space one is just nonsensical delay reverb effects. Um, lots of delay in the cavern one reminds me of like Super Nintendo kind of uh, Donkey Kong Country in the caves. I, I really don't know exactly what goes into making the surround daughter board do its thing, but it's fascinating. And you know, you can, um, you can just bring this, come on, get out of here. <laughs> okay, we'll do it this way. You can bring it up pretty much any time you're doing anything. I, I don't know if you can do it in games, but you know, any kind of program uh, that's playing back music in here, then it'll let you uh, affect the sound output that way. Yeah, let me, let me just go ahead and open windows. Yeah, you can hear we just have regular Windows sound playback there, but it also does add some uh, control panel bits for going through different OPL3 modes for drums and things like that, as well as I installed some AdLib Gold MIDI maps. So that is good. Uh, MIDI playback will know what to do with it. And then of course the drivers uh, just installs those as Yamaha GSS MIDI synth and Wave MIDI auxiliary. Standard AdLib Gold stuff. There is also a program or another control panel somewhere. I don't think I installed it yet, but it allows you to control the surround and other mixer effects. It's like a Windows version of the mixer. I don't know if I put that on here or not. Anyway, that's also a thing. Uh, again, though, this is all just like your regular AdLib Gold. Nothing different, really. But, um, yeah, we can... Uh, whoops. Let's go back. I was in the right directory. Yeah. We can run some Canyon... Doesn't really sound amazing. I don't know if I like the way that sounds. Let me try a different one. These all sound a little, a little odd. Let's just, uh, let's try this one. Eh, 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 whatever. There's things you can do in Windows. That's not really what appeals to me about the AdLib Gold. That would be things like, ah, dang it, we need to clear the memory and whatnot. Yeah, and Dune in particular, but you know, there's, smatterings of uh, other games that do support the AdLib Gold uh, in reality, you know, and don't just treat it as like a, <laughs> a Sound Blaster clone or an AdLib original. Anyway, I'm going to put this just on linear again, although I don't really think it matters. I believe, yeah, each game, each program just sets the AdLib Gold parameters how it wants to. You don't really have any control over it. Uh, and you can't bring up like that pop-up mixer during the game. So anyway, let's just listen to some Dune music directly recorded because it's awesome.
know how to get back to my ship. Anyway, that sounds fantastic. I do think it is making use of the surround module because there's some extra eh, extra effects there. Little bits of delay and ding, 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 echoey goodness going on, uh, especially with that ornithopter music, that theme in particular. Yeah, that's uh, that's really cool. Uh, I don't know how to get back though. <laughs> Dang it. Oh no, that's a problem. Well, anyway, Ah, uh, yeah, there we go. I figured I'd be dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Well, that's, that's one way to quit the game, I guess. All right, so, yeah, it's put it over into pseudo. But I, I swear it added some kind of effects. Uh, here's just a side-by-side -side of the Ornithopter music alone, uh, recorded from this Adlib Gold clone, as well as the original Gold 1000 card that I covered a while back. So yeah, um, this thing is <laughs> extremely cool. Oh man, you know, for uh, for the games that it works with, and that is to be expected. Honestly, I've I've never really had any uh, complaints coming from uh, the same folks that did things like the Orpheus cards and whatnot. You know, I'm gonna want an Orpheus two to cover too. So yeah, it's just it's so it's so neat to see this kind of stuff. That being said, um, you can't get this anymore, so whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and you know, I just wanted to show it here because I had access to it for a little bit, and I guess I'm going to be sending it back to um, the person that lent it to me for this. Um, thank you again for that. You know who you are, and uh, that's it. Thanks for watching this blurb.